I'm here at the park to enjoy the fresh air. But even in this park, I'm continuously bombarded by radiation. For example, there is visible light, infrared and radio waves. These are non-ionizing radiation. They do not change the structures of atoms or damage our DNA. But there is also ionizing radiation that has enough energy to knock electrons from atoms and damage DNA. I'm holding in my hand a Geiger Muller or GM counter. This is an instrument used to measure ionizing radiation. Does this mean that I'm in danger? Fortunately, no. If you do a quick search on the internet, you will find that the level of ionizing radiation we usually encounter in our environment is well below the recommended limit of radiation exposure. This is known as background radiation. It is normal for the background count to be between 30 and 60 counts per minute. It can come from the air, the soil and the rock. It can also come from the cosmic rays, which are high-energy particles that travel to the Earth from the Sun or distant galaxies. Even the food we eat contains radioactive materials. Let's measure the radiation from some common food items. Now, I'm going to put the GM counter next to these food items for one to two minutes. Wow! The readings from these food items are much higher than the background count. Does it mean they are unsafe to eat? The short answer is no, they are safe. But first, make a guess. Here are some spices treated with ionizing radiation. Will the GM counter reading of the spices be even higher? Let's see. The reading of the irradiated spices is comparable to the background count. Most people think that irradiated food is radioactive, but our results show that this is not true. Let's learn about food irradiation. Food irradiation makes food safe for consumption. Food packaged in boxes are transferred into the irradiation facility. They then move through a special chamber at a specific speed to ensure they are exposed to gamma radiation for only a specific amount of time. The absorbed radiation kills insects and bacteria while keeping the food fresh. Food does not become radioactive as a result. The irradiated food will be sent to another area for further treatment to ensure food is safe to be sold and consumed. Let me explain using an analogy. Food irradiation is like using the flame in this barbecue pit to heat up the food inside the pot. During the heating process, there is only the transfer of energy from the heat source to the food. It kills the germs in the food to make it safe to eat. Notice that nothing is physically transported from the charcoal flame to the food. So my food is not contaminated even though the heat source contains lots of toxic elements. However, if bits of charcoal ash from the heat source lands on the food, the food will become contaminated and it is not safe to eat. Look closely. Can you see the charcoal ash that has directly contaminated the food? Radioactive contamination happens in a similar manner. Contamination happens when radionuclides from the radioactive source are physically transferred from the radioactive source to the food. Indirect contamination is also possible. In nuclear accidents, radioactive isotopes may be released into the surrounding seawater and soil. Radioactive isotopes can be absorbed by plants and animals when they take in water from these sources. When we consume this, we are indirectly contaminated. From this video, we learned that all living things are constantly exposed to radiation. To measure and detect ionizing radiation, GM counters are commonly used. Irradiation is a process by which ionizing radiation is used to sterilize objects. Irradiating food does not cause it to become radioactive. Food contamination occurs when radioactive nucleides are transferred directly from the radioactive source onto crops and livestock or indirectly through the soil or food they consume. Stay tuned for the next part of the video where I will bring you to SFAA to learn about the types of radiation testing conducted in our foods before putting them on the shelves. <laughs>